I, I don't know about you guys, but I needed that music to wake me up this morning. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Mark Middleton, live this morning at GBHQ, Groin Boulder headquarters. Hope you guys are doing well. It's already a pretty busy Friday here. We've got a crew out shooting, which is great for us. We're actually doing face-to-face -face live shootings now. Um, does it feel like we are beginning to emerge a little bit from the pandemic? Uh, I know it depends a whole lot on where you live. Uh, obviously, the, the the depth of the tragedy in India is almost incomprehensible. And I, I think with just a couple of exceptions, everybody uh, in our audience here at Growing Boulder has been vaccinated. Uh, of course, we don't require it, but I do think most here you know, believe in its safety, believe in its efficacy. And there, there is almost a strange stress release uh, when you get vaccinated, at least I've experienced this, you feel like if nothing else, you've eliminated, uh, admittedly the rare, but the potentially tragic worst case scenario of ending up intubated uh, on a ventilator in the ICU. So I wonder if you guys are feeling the same if you've been vaccinated. Of course, I know the pandemic has been beyond tragic for millions of families worldwide. Their suffering is real and it will last for many, many years. For all of us, it has been at the very least a major roadblock, something that we have to navigate. Uh, we have to find our way around, which leads me to this morning's bold start. And bold start, if you don't know about it, is a single graphic. It's a meme, a quote, a thought that always gets my day off to a bold start. Jess, who is our social media manager, deserves all of the credit. It's her project and it is awesome. Tens of thousands subscribe to it. Uh, it is free. It shows up in your inbox every morning. Uh, you look at it for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. You take a deep breath and you get about the business of living your best life. This morning's bold start uh, is especially appropriate to this conversation. It is detours in life may lead us to discovering places we never knew we loved embrace detours and you know folks it's not just places but people and things it's new software it's new tools uh, even new opportunities and as you guys probably know when the pandemic began we had never done a show like this and now this is streaming live to facebook and youtube and and even to twitch and other than an occasional skype we never regularly did internet video interviews and now we do four or five every week with major thought leaders in fact you guys are going to meet one of those in just a minute but the point is the pandemic for all businesses has been at the very least a major hurdle a huge rob roadblock that has required some major detours and when the pandemic ends uh, i would be willing to wager that many of the actions that we've all taken will become standard business practices moving forward pandemic or not. Now, the detours have actually become something that has been very good for our business. So if you want to get your day off to a bold start, just go to growingbolder.com and sign up for the insider newsletter. And the bold start will be there before you know it each and every morning. And of course, as always, you can unsubscribe anytime you want. All right. Speaking of online interviews, one of the true blessings in doing what we do here is the opportunity to speak with smart, passionate, inspiring, creative men and women who are living big, bold lives. And, and not just the opportunity to speak with them, but, but really more importantly, to learn from them. And I wanted to bring this next interview to you live, but we decided that we shouldn't risk it because the guy we're going to interview was in Baja, Mexico. And by design, he is more than just a little bit off of the grid, if you know what I mean. So we taped it and I'm glad we did because it took at least 30 to 40 minutes to get a reliable connection. But once we did, I was able to speak with a guy that I have admired for many, many years. Uh, I'll be back live shortly in just a second to wrap this up. Uh, but for now, buckle in because you are about to meet a fascinating man who is going to share many profound and important thoughts about midlife transitions and aging in general. Chip Conley is a true agent of transformation. He's a New York Times bestselling author who totally disrupted the hospitality industry, not once, but twice. Uh, when he was just 26 years old, he founded a company by the name of Joie de Vivre Hospitality. 
Uh, he transformed a rundown inner city motel in San Francisco uh, into the second largest boutique hotel brand in America. He ran it for 24 years and eventually sold it for I guess hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2010, a couple of young guys, a couple of young entrepreneurs had an idea called Airbnb. Uh, and they were smart enough to realize that they needed some big time help. Uh, and they engaged Chip as Airbnb's head of global hospitality and strategy. And boy, was that ever a good move because he helped run their startup. He helped turn their startup from just an idea into the world's leading hospitality brand. Uh, he still acts as a company strategic advisor, uh, but he now has a new passion project that I wanted to talk to him about. Uh, it was 2018 when he founded the Modern Elder Academy in Baja, Mexico. It's the world's very first wisdom school that's dedicated to helping people navigate their midlife. Uh, he's an amazing guy, and I can't tell you how excited I am to talk to him. So let's do it right now. Chip Conley, how are you doing today? <laughs> Mark, uh, other than some Wi-Fi challenges in Mexico, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for letting me join you. I'm really impressed by the size and depth of your uh, growing Boulder community. Well, you know, you guys are off the grid for a reason. So uh, we are patient and understood the, uh, you know, the challenges that you had getting online. Um, what's it like there today? What, what's going on in Baja? Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, first of all, thanks for the, the generous introduction. Um, I had no idea at age 60, I would be in a place where I was uh, owning the term modern elder. Um, <laughs> uh, that's the word, they, that's the phrase they used to describe me at, uh, at Airbnb uh, eight years ago when I joined them. Um, what I've learned over the course of time and part of the reason why I wrote a book called Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder and created the Modern Elder Academy was because um, my basic belief was we're living longer, power in a digital society is moving younger, and the world is changing faster. And those three variables have a lot of people in midlife and later confused. Um, and now sociologists are even telling us that midlife lasts 40 years from age 35 to 75. But we don't have any, we don't have much in the way of schools, tools, or rituals or rites of passage for people in midlife and later. And so that's uh, that's what we do here. We help people to um, reimagine their relationship with aging, shift their mindset, um, and to cultivate and harvest their wisdom. You know, talk about the right guy at the right time. I mean, obviously, it's fair to say that you could have chosen to do anything because you're that kind of guy. Um, including doing nothing, which I think many <laughs> people would have thought you'd earned the right to do that. But uh, you obviously, Chip, still have a need not only to be engaged, but to help other people get engaged. Uh, and the opportunity that you guys are addressing is really the one that Growing Boulder is addressing as well and in, in similar ways. And, and I always say that you know, the, the, the opportunity that we're chasing is not going to exist in 10 years because people will understand that yeah. midlife is now the time uh, to reinvent, to transform themselves, that we've got two, three and four decades ahead of us. So uh, you're you're not only helping the world, you're seizing what is really a pretty good business opportunity, don't you think? Well, yes, I think that's true. What what led me to doing it was my own dark night of the soul around age 47. And um I had gotten to a place where I didn't want to be running that boutique hotel company, Joie de Vivre, anymore. Um, I had a long-term relationship ending. I had, was running out of cash during the Great Recession, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I had a flatline experience. And all of that woke me up. Um, but I also had five friends commit suicide, um, average age about 50, all men, uh, during the Great Recession. And so in some ways, these were the, these moments where I just said, note to self, I'm not sure what to do about this. but Clearly, uh, people in midlife and later um, are struggling. And in fact, the suicide rate for people 45 to 65 has grown by more than 50% in the last 20 years. So long story short is um, we really wanted to help people to realize that middle essence, which is the era of adult adolescence, middle essence is when you're going through hormonal, physical, emotional changes, often around 50, to, mostly between 50 and 60, but it could be 45 to 65. Um, this is a period of time for not just the midlife crisis, but also the midlife calling. And how do you, how do you repurpose yourself, uh, what I call same seed, different soil, 
Um, and so we decided to try it here in uh, Baja because I had a home on the beach here. Uh, this was back in early 2018. And we've now had 1,250 people from 24 countries go through our program. And um, we have an MEA online program as well. Um, and it, what we've seen is the average age is, is about 54 of people coming, but we've had people as young as 30 and as old as 88 come to a place called the Modern Elder Academy, which I would never expect many people in their 30s to come to a place called the Modern Elder Academy. But there are a lot of people in their 30s who actually, if you're a software engineer or a fashion model or in the advertising industry, you might actually feel over the hill at age 38. Well, you know, I think we've all learned the way that you have a successful older age is to start early. So uh, I think it makes great sense. You know, we find that our message resonates with 20 and 30 year olds as well. Um, you know, what what happens at the Modern Elder Academy? Uh, Chip, and I do want to get to MEA online because, folks, I think this is an amazing opportunity yeah. for anybody out there that either doesn't have the time, the money or the ability to get away and actually go to Baja. Uh, I, I think they're doing a great job of exporting the lessons that you could learn there to an online experience. But 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 take us to MEA in Baja, Chip. What happens there? How long do we go for and what do we do? Yep. Well, I'm going to talk about what it's like in non-COVID times, which is soon enough. Um, and uh, and we also have a, lo a location in Santa Fe, a 2600 acre ranch we've just purchased, which will be our, our first US location that will open in early 2023. So typically for a workshop, you arrive on a Sunday here in at the Los Cabos Air Airport, Cabo San Lucas, and we pick you up and we're an hour north of there just on the Pacific Ocean. Um, and then you go through a program with approximately 18 to 20 other people. Um, again, average age 54, but wide range of ages often. Um, and the program is all dedicated to the idea of how do you create a growth mindset relative to aging? So a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, what's the difference? A fixed mindset is what we tend to get into as we get older. We tend to say, okay, this, this, I have a fixed point of view on the world. I have a fixed point of view on my capacity. I have a fixed point of view on my identity. And for all those reasons, we actually get bored and stuck. <laughs> and then sometimes we pe we're perceived as sort of a curmudgeon. Uh, and a growth mindset is less focused on proving yourself and, and trying to win, but it's more focused on learning. Instead of winning, it's about learning. So how could you become a beginner, uh, whether it's juggling or baking bread with three other people or doing yoga, uh, learning how to journal, uh, maybe even learning how to surf? We have all of these opportunities. Now, those are some of the fun activities we have during the week, um, but we also have great classroom, uh, an open air classroom uh, with, with shade um, where people actually learn how to become a mentor. Uh, how to use appreciative inquiry, which is a form of asking catalytic questions to actually be wise. Uh, sometimes people think that to be wise is to be the one with all the answers, but we believe the, the wisest people usually have the best questions. Um, so it's a whole program uh, developed by a series of coaches, uh, university professors, and those of us who've been in the business world for a while. And um, we're, you know, we, it's very immersive. Uh, and yes, MEA online, it, it's um, it's available. Our next class starts, uh, course starts June 5th. It's an eight week course. Uh, we call it digital intimacy because there might be three or 400 people in the course, but you have a cohort of six or eight people. And those are the people you build a relationship with over the course of those eight weeks. And you do one-on-one -on -one conversations with them based upon uh, the learning you, you get along the way, watching videos, reading things. It's not a huge commitment um, in terms of time, but it's been phenomenal in terms of how people feel a sense of connection. Because it, last thought, the three things that people need most after age 50 are purpose, wellness, and community. And that is based upon research that Dr. Phil Pizzo has done at Stanford. And so those are three pillars of the program that we have. And you know, I think one of the challenges, Chip, that you, you, you have to deal with and overcome is, is that I mean, there's no question we live in an overtly ageist culture uh, and an overtly ageist workplace. And I think the the difficulty in finding work and finding connection has only been exacerbated by uh, the, the pandemic. Uh, is there some application in, in MEA online if there are people that are trying to figure out how they can get back involved in, oh, in the yeah. workplace? Uh, it, will they learn something there? That the, the roots of the program come from my book, Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder, which is really speaking to the idea of how do people who are older um, have a, an important role in the workplace. Um, 
And so, yes, the idea of same seed, different soil, what does that mean? It means that you have, over the course of your decades in the workplace, built some skills. You often undervalue what those are. And often there are things like psychological safety. How do you create a team that feels connected? Emotional intelligence, which is something that actually tends to grow with age. Um, crystallized intelligence and thinking, which is the ability to think holistically and connect the dots. When we actually help people to understand that those are skills they have that they can bring into any workplace, in any industry, no matter what their role, they start to realize, wow, I have something to offer here. So the experiential program that we have developed is one that gives people confidence, gives people confidence. Now, there is ageism in the world. Let's start with that. Ageism exists. But as one, one of the most famous executive recruiters said to me, Chip, um, ageism exists, but if you can get an interview, now that is not always easy, whether it's online or in person, when you show up with curiosity and a passionate engagement in what you do, what you do, people don't notice the wrinkles, they notice the energy. They notice how you are showing up and the energy you have, and then you come across as almost ageless. Now, that is, may sound incredibly idealistic, but what, having had now over a thousand people go through the program, many of them in that transitional state of what's next for themselves and to see them actually go out with confidence and to go out and find new work um, and new a new career, maybe even a new calling. Um, I, I, I can say with some confidence that uh, people, people find the program to be very valuable. And it's obvious, Chip, that that it wears well on you. I've always admired <laughs> people whose lives are a reflection of their true selves. And, and it's obvious that uh, what you're doing now is an intersection of hospitality. I, I'm guessing the people that come to Baja to MEA get taken care of pretty well. Uh, yes. And education, you know, it's the intersection of hospitality and, and education. And it obviously, from the smile on your face that uh, it seems to be ever present, it, it's something you enjoy doing. Well, it is. I mean, I, I, I've been a disrupt, as you said earlier in my introduction, um, I have been a disruptor. And sometimes disruptors are seen as like not friendly. But if you're a disruptor in the hospitality business, you better be a nice guy, too. And my <laughs> first company is called Joie de Vivre, which means joy of life. I think more than anything, um, when it comes to this, this disruption we're doing here, it's really twofold. It's a disruption, disruption in education. Why is it that we pour so much money in colleges and universities that almost say, you know, you can't come here after age 25. Um, why couldn't we maybe repurpose some of these liberal arts schools that are actually struggling right now that may actually go out of business? And what if we were to create gap years where people in their 50s, 60s, 70s might actually show up for a year and live on campus for a year with a bunch of people similarly aged? I think that's the future. That's what Modern Elder Academy is about. Secondly, um, with our community here in Baja, as well as the one we're creating in Santa Fe, we're creating a, what we call a regenerative community. Not a retirement community, but a regenerative community because our focus is not so much on endless leisure, leisure and living on a fairway, but instead it's about uh, endless curiosity and the idea that we are here on earth to actually um, sip from the elixir of life, which is curiosity and creativity and, and a sense of purpose. And so, um, and you don't live on a fairway at our regenerative community, you live on a farm, a regenerative farm, which is a form of farming that actually helps the environment as well. So long story short is um, I like disruption partly because I think industries like higher education and senior living communities or retirement communities um, need someone to occasionally be the provocateur with new ideas uh, to help them innovate as well. And that's really what we saw in the boutique hotel business was the, the national chains. And you walk into any Marriott or Hilton now, they look like a boutique hotel. That was not true 30 years ago. Uh, it was not true before a 26 year old by the name of Chip Conley got involved in the industry. And, uh, you know, folks, we are talking to Chip Conley, who has an MBA from Stanford University. Uh, he is a disruptor, an interesting, provocative guy who is, uh, you know, we say, Chip, as I know you know, that, you know, we don't ignore the reality of aging, but we choose to look at passion and purpose and possibility instead of just loss and limitation. And when people like you add, their voice to that chorus, I, I get really, really excited because, you know, you do reinforce 
that, that, that life is worth living and that it's possible for all of us to extract joy out of almost every moment if, if only we'll, we'll take the, the opportunity to learn how to do it. And I, and I think that's what MEA is all about. It, it's teaching us to figure out how to do that. Well, having, written, having read your book, having uh, reviewed what you do on social media, which is very impressive, and having seen some of your videos, we like you and I are peas in a pod. <laughs> I, I do love the fact that I'm not alone and you're not alone. And, and there are a collection of us out there in the world who are almost creating a movement, a, a movement dedicated to um, not being fearful of elderhood. Uh, now that's different than el being elderly. Elderly might be the last five or 10 years of your life and that's a fine time as well. But you know, we have three stages of life. We have childhood, we have adulthood, and we have elderhood. Um, we have done a great job as a society of helping people to understand that transition period from childhood to adulthood, um, what we call adolescence, which actually in 1903, that word didn't exist. 1904, that word got created. And we spent a lot of money with you know, child labor laws and, and junior high schools and public uh, uh, high schools to help people with that transition period. And then you have a commencement exercise, finishing high school, which commences adulthood. But we have very little in society that helps people in that transitional period from adulthood to elderhood. And elderhood is, elder. to be an elder means, it's a relative term. It means that compared to the people you're surrounded by, you're older. You could be 50 and an elder. You could be 40 and an elder in many tech companies in Silicon Valley. And of course, they started calling me at age 52, eight years ago, the modern elder at Airbnb. So elderhood is a period of time where we, start to learn the unexpected pleasures of aging. And we start to, as the U-curve of happiness, social science research has shown, people actually get happier with each passing decade after about age 47. Um, so I'm, I'm here to just be hopefully a role model um, and maybe occasionally a poster child for the idea that life gets better with age. Well, before we lose the, the spotty internet fr from Mexico, uh, or you decide to grab your surfboard or, or go take a Tai Chi class or whatever you do down there, um, uh, you, you know, let me ask you this, because what a, what a rare opportunity it is to chat with you. Yours has been a life chip of creative risk taking, uh, and it doesn't appear as though you're slowing down anytime soon. Is there a moral to your story? Is there something about life in general, the big picture that, that, that you can share with us that you've learned? I, I, I think the moral to my story is that it hasn't been written yet. <laughs> the moral to my story is uh, at the end of that cartoon, you'd see the end. Um, I'm not scared of the end. The end though is further out there than I had originally thought. Uh, I, when I go on online um, longevity sites, it says that I may live till about age 100. If I do live till age 100, at age 60, I am barely halfway through my adult life if I started counting at age 18. So when you know you have almost as many years of adulthood ahead of you, adulthood and elderhood ahead of you, as you have behind you at age 60, wow, it makes you realize, maybe I should learn Spanish if I live in Mexico. Maybe I should start to learn how to do yoga because it's good for you know, keeping me limber um, and balanced. You know, You start being open to new things. Before I let you go, uh, I also, I would pinch myself if I didn't ask you about Burning Man, because uh, uh, that has been a, it's been a major curiosity of mine for, for many, many years. Uh, if I were to go, uh, yeah. I'm 69, will soon be 70. If I were to go, would I enjoy myself? And I'm asking Chip this, folks, because he's on the board of Burning Man. He is, in fact, the Burning Man. So, so would I enjoy it if I go? You could come stay in my bald man, bald white guy's camp. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I think you would. It, it, interestingly, Burning Man is like a utopian experience. It's, it's sort of like, what would the world be like if artists ruled the world? Um, and uh, so I think it, I have been there with 90 year olds who've enjoyed themselves. Uh, you know, let's wrap this up, uh, you know, for the benefit of the people who are watching. I, you know, I've gotten my benefit chatting with you, Chip. But but, but really, folks, the, the, the reason I wanted to talk to Chip is I'm fascinated with the Modern Elder Academy and really got interested when I learned that they were doing MEA online because it's now accessible uh, to just about anybody. So, Chip, if people are interested, I know you said June 5th is the next class. I'm assuming they, they, they run year round. But if someone wants to learn more, where do they go? 
They can go to the Modern Elder Academy website, um, which is modernelderacademy.com. And um, you'll see uh, six tiles there and just click on the MEA online uh, tile and it'll take you to uh, a page that'll tell you a little bit more and you can sign up. Um, additionally, we have a, a website, um, a MEA Facebook group. It's called the Modern Elder Academy private Facebook group. And you can go there and just uh, um, ask to be uh, let, you have to answer a couple questions and then just ask to be let into that group and you'll learn more. And it's a really engaged group of people, many of whom have actually experienced MEA online or here in Baja. Well, you're doing good work and God bless you for it. And, and folks, I should note that if you do go to uh, the MEA online thing and you're interested in it, uh, Chip has been kind enough to, to, to give us a code, Boulder. If you put that in there, you'll get a nice discount. And, and I have to tell you, that's not why we're doing this. We, right. you know, Chip could give us a 100% discount and we wouldn't do it if we didn't believe in it. So Thank uh, you. check it out. Uh, I know it'll bring great value to your life if you can find the time to do it. Uh, Chip, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mark. Uh, God bless you for what you're doing. God bless you too. And, and uh, thank you to creating a community as bold and, uh, and engaged as Growing Boulder is. We're not done hanging out. <laughs> I agree. Mexico, All right. come on down. Okay. <laughs> bye -bye. I'll be there. Oh, you better believe I'll be there. Back live now at GBHQ. And to learn more about uh, Modern Elder Academy, just want to uh, uh, you know, kind of reaffirm what he just said. Just uh, go to modernelderacademy.com, click on the MEA online box. And as Chip noted, their next eight week session begins June 5th. You can use the uh, Boulder code to get a discount. The course is designed to help navigate midlife transitions. It's a huge help in making the rest of your life the best of your life. And I got to tell you, once again, while I love what they're doing there and how they are doing it, I would not be recommending it if uh, it were not for the fact that 90%, 97% of those who take the course enthusiastically recommend it. Uh, you know, we had a question from Pam Crossett uh, during that interview. She asked, what is the name of his book? Uh, his latest book and the one that really kind of uh, was the inspiration for the actual MEA Academy is called Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder. But uh, if you're a Chip Conley fan, and you really should be, uh, he's written many best-selling books, including The Rebel Rules, uh, Daring to Be Yourself in Business, Peak, How uh, Great Companies Get Their Mojo, Emotional Equations, Simple Truths for Creating Happiness uh, and Success in Business and Life, uh, and a couple of others. Uh, so when someone which brings us to our meme. In fact, we're going to do, use a, a Chip Conley quote for our meme today. When someone is eager to learn, you don't notice that that person is older. You just see that this person is a passionate, smart spirit, which is uh, pretty much what he just said in that interview for us. It is so true. Uh, we are all energized by passion, by enthusiasm, and, and I think especially by curiosity. It is a very appealing trait I believe we're hardwired to be attracted to it. It's in our DNA because truth be told, curiosity is truly one of mankind's most important characteristics. It is responsible for every great invention, every great advancement in history. In fact, Albert Einstein once said, I have no special talents. I am just passionately curious. And one of the keys to successful aging is, is transforming fear into curiosity because to a large extent, a lack of curiosity means acceptance of the status quo, which as we noted in that interview, in an ageist culture can be highly destructive. A lack of curiosity will lead to complacency. Uh, it will lead to resistance to change and avoidance of risk, while embracing curiosity does lead to lifelong learning, to new experiences, to new relationships and new opportunities. Curiosity, folks, might have killed the cat, but it will definitely keep you alive. So I'll leave you with that. Have a great day. Have an amazing weekend. And of course, you can always find us right here or on growingbolder.com.